Major tech reviewers spent hours covering the iPhone 17. They talk about the new aluminium design, the vapor chamber cooling, the center stage camera. They all missed the revolution hiding in plain sight. Now, before you think another clickbait special audio video, hear me out. Because every single iPhone 17 owner is walking around with two technologies that were impossible last year. Not improved, not upgraded, actually impossible. Two technologies that bankrupted entire companies trying to solve this problem. And here's the thing. For 144 years, the brightest engineers in the world tried to crack this. They failed. Every single time. In 1933, Bell Labs tried with a dummy head called Oscar. Failed. In 1972, Neumann tried with the KUAD dummy head. Failed. In 1978, Lou Reed captured audio perfection on his album Street Hustle. And even that wasn't enough. The pattern was clear, this problem couldn't be solved. Not with the technology we had, not with the physics we understood. Until Apple hid the solution inside the iPhone 17's N1 chip and a 19 Pro processor. I know special audio isn't new, but what Apple did here, that's never been done before. The feature isn't coming. It is already in your pocket, and most people have no idea it's even there. This is my investigation into how Apple solved the impossible. I am Kemal Oksal, professor at Berklee College of Music. For over 20 years, I have worked as a music producer, conductor and educator, leading orchestras, producing albums and mentoring young artists. Now, I invite you to discover the stories that shape what we hear. Each week I open the words behind the music and whether you are a musician or not, you are invited. So let's get started. Okay, before you click away thinking spatial audio isn't new, hear me out. Because yes, Apple's had spatial audio for years. You've been using it on your AirPods since 2020. You can listen to Dolby Atmos on Apple Music right now. But here's what everyone's missing, and I mean everyone, including the tech reviewers who spent hours covering this phone. What Apple put in the iPhone 17 isn't just a better special audio. It is two completely different technologies that solve problems engineers have been failing to solve since 1881. Stick with me, we are going to get there, but first, you need to understand why this specific problem has been called impossible for so long. Let me take you back to the basics. Binaural recording uses two microphones to create a three-dimensional sound sensation. When you put on headphones, you can hear sounds positioned left, right, front and back closer to how you naturally perceive sound in real life. Modern spatial audio, like what you have been using on your AirPods, evolved from these binaural concepts, adding more sophisticated processing and multi-channel capabilities. It's magical when it works. But here's the problem that's haunted engineers since 1881. Actually, it's two problems and they're both brutal. First. How do you capture true 3D sound in a way that actually works? Second, how do you transmit it without destroying the quality that makes it spatial? Think about how your brain processes spatial sound. The time differences between when sound reaches each ear, the way it bounces off your outer ear, how your head creates an acoustic shadow that tells you exactly where sounds are coming from. Your brain is performing incredibly complex calculations thousands of times per second. Just so you can tell where a voice is coming from in a crowded room. Now imagine trying to recreate that artificially. In 1881, Clement Adair became the first person to really try. He invented the first binaural audio system at the Paris Opera, transmitting audio through two separate phone lines, one for each ear to listeners located two miles away. The technology worked. People could genuinely hear the opera in three dimensions. 
They could tell where singers were positioned on stage just by listening through telephone receivers. But here's where the dream started dying. There was a huge flaw that would haunt spatial audio for the next century and a half. Binaural recording is intended for replay using headphones. It will not translate properly over stereo speakers. That means if you made a beautiful binaural recording and played it through your living room speakers, it just sounded wrong muddled like you were listening underwater even worse recordings made with one system wouldn't work properly on another system every company had their own approach their own dummy head design their own microphone placement nothing was universal and then there is the transmission problem even if you could record spatial audio perfectly transmitting it wirelessly meant compression quality loss latency that slight delay that breaks immersion bluetooth even today's best codecs compress audio they have to there simply isn't enough bandwidth for lossless transmission listen to this airpods max apple's flagship headphones can only do lossless audio when they are plugged in with a cable not wirelessly even with the latest bluetooth technology that's how hard this problem has been until now. The iPhone 17 just changed everything with two hidden technologies working together. And most reviewers completely missed it because they were too busy arguing about the color option. ASF solves the universality problem, making spatial audio work identically across every Apple device. But to understand why this matters, why this is actually different from what you have been using, you need to see how many brilliant people failed trying to solve this exact problem. The story of spatial audio is a graveyard of ambitious failures. And I mean that literally. Companies went bankrupt chasing this dream. Let me walk you through that wreckage, because this is where it gets interesting. In the early 1930s, Bell Labs developed Oscar, a dummy head with 1.4-inch microphones inserted into its cheeks. Meanwhile, the Dutch firm Philips developed their own binaural head with microphones at the ears, which produced a better result. Here is the crucial moment. These experiments happened alongside British engineer Alan Bloom Line's invention of stereophonic sound and stereo one binaural lost. Now you are probably wondering if binaural sounded better, why did stereo win? Here's what people miss. Stereo was portable. It worked on any speaker system. Binaural remained trapped in labs. Not because it sounded worse, but because it only worked with headphones under perfect conditions. Fast forward to 1972. German company Neumann unveils the KUAD, the first commercial binaural recording system. This is it, people thought. Binaural goes mainstream. It didn't. In 1978, Lou Reed released Street Hassle, the first commercially produced binaural pop record. Critics loved it. Rolling Stone called it brilliant. But even this success revealed binaural's fundamental problem. It only worked perfectly through headphones. Most listeners played it on speakers and all that special positioning collapsed. And remember, this is 1978. The Sony Walkman won't launch until 1979. Headphone culture doesn't exist yet. By the mid-1980s, sound professionals had given up. The problem wasn't capturing special audio. Engineers had figured that out. The problem was making it work everywhere for everyone without specialized gear. And wireless transmission meant compression, destroying the spatial cues your brain needs. This is why audio engineers moved on to surround sound and Dolby Atmos technologies that work through speakers. But here's what nobody saw coming. Now here's the part that made me go back and re-research everything. Ready? What Apple realized is that everyone was solving the wrong problem. Let me explain what I mean. Current object-based audio formats like the Dolby Atmos you are already using can position sounds in 3D space. They are excellent at this, but they cannot position sounds in your 3D space. Not the actual room you are sitting in right now. ASF changes this entirely. I'm going to get technical for a minute, but I promise it is worth it. Because this is where everyone else gets it wrong. Apple Spatial Audio Formats includes all sorts of new data in its calculations. The position of the listener, 
the orientation of their head, even the acoustics of the room itself. Here is the technical breakdown. ASF is composed of new metadata coupled with linear PCM and a powerful new spatial renderer that's built into Apple platforms. The rendered audio is completely adaptive based on object position and orientation as well as listener position and orientation. None of it is baked in. Everything adjusts in real time. This is the breakthrough everyone missed. ASF doesn't just record sound, it records instructions for recreating the experience of sound on any device. Think about what this means for a second. Current special audio formats, including what you've been using on your AirPods, can anchor sound to your device. Turn your head while watching a movie and the dialogue stays fixed to your screen. But ASF does something fundamentally different. It anchors sounds to real-world physical space and incorporates room acoustics. Not just relative to your device, but to actual locations in your environment. While ASF is coming to iPhones, iPads, Macs and Apple TVs, Apple's primary target is clearly Vision OS devices like the Vision Pro. Because on Vision Pro, the system knows exactly where you are in physical space. It also knows what is in that space. It can adjust the audio to match your environment perfectly. But here is the real innovation hiding in plain sight. ASF allows for a much more immersive experience because it uses data like your position in a space and what is actually in that space. The system adapts dynamically and it's delivered in an MP4 container using APAC, the Apple Positional Audio Codec, at up to 768 kilobits per second. To put that in perspective, high quality Bluetooth audio tops out around 328 kilobits per second and that's compressed. But ASF is only half of the revolution. The other half is how you get this audio from your iPhone to your your AirPods without destroying it. Let me explain what is actually happening inside the iPhone 17 that makes it fundamentally different from everything that came before. The iPhone 17's implementation includes peer-to-peer -peer encrypted connections that bypass Wi-Fi and cloud servers. Your iPhone talks directly to your AirPods with maximum privacy and minimum latency. AirPods Pro 2 can achieve lossless audio but only when paired specifically with Vision Pro through a special wireless protocol. That capability is locked to Vision Pro only. Connect them to your iPhone, iPad or Mac and you are back to compressed Bluetooth audio. Standard Bluetooth simply doesn't have the bandwidth for true lossless transmission. But iPhone 17 has the capability for full lossless transmission wirelessly across the entire ecosystem, not just limited to one device pairing. Apple isn't using this revolutionary technology for music streaming yet. Let that sink in for a second. The hardware infrastructure is there. The protocol exists. The processing power is available. Everything is ready. But Apple is being strategic about when to unlock this capability. These are the baby steps towards something much bigger. Wireless music production. Imagine being able to perform, mix and master music on wireless headphones with zero latency and zero quality loss. That's been impossible until now. But the infrastructure is already in place, in your pocket. What we are witnessing isn't just a technical achievement. It's a foundation being laid for the future of audio. And most people are completely unaware it is happening. Now, every Apple device can play it back perfectly, adapting to your environment in real time. Starting with iPhone 16 and continuing through iPhone 17, Apple's models support spatial audio recording with audio mix for post-recording sound editing. The entire industry is racing towards spatial audio right now. Some Samsung and Google are promoting Eclipse Audio as a Dolby Atmos rival. Sony has LDAC. Qualcomm has Snapdragon Sound. But Apple has a crucial advantage that nobody else can match. They control the entire ecosystem from capture to playback. From the microphones in the iPhone 17 to the speakers in AirPods Pro 3 to the software that processes everything in between. And the power is already in your pocket. You just don't know it is there yet. ASF solves the universality problem. For the first time, spatial audio can work identically across every Apple device, adapting to your environment in real time. Together in the iPhone 17, they saw what Oscar couldn't in 1933, what Neumann couldn't in 1972, what 
what Lou Reed struggled with in 1978. Apple didn't just invent special audio, they built the infrastructure for it to work everywhere wirelessly. And they did it so quietly that most people don't even know the revolution is already in their pocket. Your iPhone 17 isn't just recording sound anymore, it's capturing space itself. And with SPR AVS and ASAP working together, that space can be transmitted and shared without the limitations that stop everyone before across the entire Apple ecosystem. So the next time someone tells you spatial audio isn't new, you can tell them they're right. But what Apple just did, that's never been done before. The revolution isn't coming, it is here. Hidden in two acronyms most people will never hear about. The infrastructure is built, the feature is ready, and it is already in your hands.